Well, hello there, humans of these earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it to, welcome back to Channel on Bushka. And today we're going to be having a little chat about this wee little beastie here, the M4A1 Revelerice. And this goes along with our patch or update 6.5 video, where we talk about uh, some of the tanks that got buffed and some of the things that I don't think were completely necessary. Uh, and Wargaming, if you're watching this one and listening, remember that test server or whatever it was, rumor that I heard about eight degrees of gun depression on the 62A. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, this all... The reason I think this is so important is you have a look at the revelries. Now, the Chieftain Mark 95, all that kind of thing. Chieftain T95, whatever. Um, the big thing about the Chieftain was it got all these different kinds of buffs. And yet, I felt like the playstyle was still pretty much the same. The Rev got one thing buffed, and that was the Alpha was switched up to 350, which was a big buff in terms of Alpha. And it's completely changed how strong the tank is in a meaningful way. Uh, because the Rev always had gun depression. It had 10 degrees of gun depression. It had a nice gun, a good dispersion, good aim time. But it didn't quite have that tier 9 medium style alpha, like the 350 alpha you get on an E50 or something like that. Well, now it does. And while it doesn't quite have that DPM, it's still got very nice DPM, 2900 DPM, which is outstanding for a tier 8 medium tank. Like, I'm not kidding. That's really good uh, DPM for a tier 8 medium. Um, that 350 alpha is a huge pickup for a tank that doesn't have good armor and doesn't have incredible mobility. But what it does have now is the kind of alpha damage that you get on, nearly get on a tier eight, 120 millimeter toting heavy, like the IS-6 uh, or the IS-5 or the IS-3 Defender, or, you know, you get the message. The, the, the T-34, this is a tank now that has Lovely mobility for a tank with this much alpha. And it's revolutionized the tank. Uh, I've got so many replays since the patch of revs doing monstrous amounts of damage because, and I'm going to say another thing, both of the videos that you're going to see today uh, from TNT and from I Am A Toaster, both good players, don't get me wrong, but both of the videos you're going to see today are on this map. Uh, and it's a, a testament to what the rev does well. The ravioli, the you know, the, the rev them up, whatever you want to call it. it. It's got gun depression. It's very good at exploiting uh, ridge running and, and hill fights. But when it pokes, previously, you would have a 310 alpha strike. And that means you poke out, you'd get spotted, you'd get your shot off, you'd pull back, you'd reset your camo, which takes, for lack of a better definable it's like 9.8 seconds is what i found it at uh let's call it 10 seconds so when you reload every 8.42 seconds that means that you've got a bunch of time there where you just quite simply are not able to come out because you know you've you've spotted and good players will then look for you to poke a, an area that's a really strong point having an extra 40 alpha on the tank it, it turns it into just it's not just the fact that it raises the dpm it's and i'm not saying the revs overpowered at all please don't think that i'm calling for the rev to be nerfed i think it's a lovely tank and i think this is a great incarnation of it but it's now the kind of tank where a good player can really exploit that that lovely big alpha because when you poke and you do 350 instead of 310 that's an extra 10 percent. you're doing an extra 10 percent damage and that's that's a huge number. And if it's a case where there's a tank that's on 350 health and you're only going to get one shot at it, then obviously you are far more likely to roll it and and knock it out of the battle with a, a gun that does this much damage than you are to just knock it out of the battle with you know a standard uh, 310 alpha round. And this is what I find interesting about our buffs. Not all buffs are created equal. Uh, and on certain tanks, certain buffs are more important. What we talked about with the Chieftain T95, if you watch that video, is how... And I don't think the Chieftain's underpowered at all. And I don't think it needs another buff, please. I mean, please don't put words in my mouth. What I'm getting at is that, you know, a Chieftain, you can buff its turret to buggery. You can 
make its snapshot ability better and all that, and that's great. But this is the meat and potatoes of the tank. When a tank is a peekaboom medium with poor armor, then look at all the revs in the game, by the way. Like, it's, it, it really has become very popular. And there were two revs in the last game as well, and it wasn't always that popular, but it certainly is now. Um, where the hell was I? <laughs> it's uh, This is the meat and potatoes of the tank. Now, the Chieftain's playstyle is a, a hull-down British heavy. It is not a frontline heavy. And so it doesn't get that big derp out there. It's, it's more of a support runner. And I can understand that. And I, I, don't, I don't mind that. And this isn't a video about the Chieftain. But what it does is it illustrates when you give something that it does... I mean, that it already does. Like, it has to be played that way. And you make what it does better. Then you run the risk of turning it into a tank that is just a cut above. Now, I don't think the rev's there yet, but you can see that the way tanks are balanced is so incredibly difficult. Uh, I don't like the playstyle of bal balancing with a hatch. Um, there's another rev on the other team. Like, this is crazy. Hey, these things weren't popping up nearly as often pre this patch. And now, the word is on the street that you've got, like, the same alpha as a, you know, an A50. And you can use it. <laughs> so get out there and use it. Um... It's it's interesting now that the tank I think it's most like in terms of playstyle, this is kind of cracky, is uh, the M46 uh, pattern. Like, it's got very, very limited armor, but it's got a lovely gun. Uh, and its DPM is just spanking for a tier 8 medium. Uh, it's got gun depression, and it's got 350 alpha. It's not quite as nimble as the pattern, but it's certainly not a... Uh, it's not a wallflower when it comes to hit point trading. It can really put some donk in and do some nasty business. And because of that, I think um, good players are just coming to grips with this thing and, and starting to rip out really big numbers. And this game is particularly incredible. Like, w this is a great drive. Like, this is a really good drive. To, to have managed to see goal 2k damage, have only given up one shot. There's a, a, 4K, a 400 alpha shot from a tank in there uh, and yet it's all going to go to hell in a handbasket there's an IS-3 over here that's going to get involved uh, IS-3 doesn't have the gun depression that's going to be very very important here and you're going to see that IS-3 just get befuddled and bamboozled uh, to a large degree by the lovely ravioli driving of I am a toaster um, this is dangerous play very dangerous play but he doesn't have a lot of options there is an IS-3 there. He's got to get out of the back. Ow. Ow. Please finish that one. Yes, excellent work. I'm a toaster. Clearing that tank like a champion. And now look at the graveyard. The elephant's graveyard here. That is just... That is a wonderful, wonderful look, isn't it? This is a good drive. The decision making here is excellent. He has got a partner over there that doesn't have a lot of hit points. He's using his gun depression. He's just sneaking out and taking shots on this IS-3 who has five degrees of gun depression and can't deal with this at all. Uh, and it's also very slow in terms of turning the turret. He's just baiting. He's looking for shots on the T-34. Poking, having a no look. Uh, no scope there. Only had time for the no scope. Quick drive around. Don't run into any of the bad guys. Sets himself up with a rock next to him and keeps the IS-3 away. Like, just playing it really, really well. Impressive, impressive game. Very, very nice. Uh, and it's turned into a one-on-one -on -one with the big tier 8 heavy. And this is really what this tank does well now. It pokes and booms. You saw it getting those shots off on the back of that T-34. And... The fact that it was able to do it in alpha bursts of 350 and it hasn't lost any of that DPM is just a really telling uh, kind of... It's a big boost to the playstyle of the tank. So if you were thinking about getting the Rev, uh, yeah, like I I think it's a, a cracking tank now. And I, I think it's a tank that just a little change like that. Well, it's not a little change. It's a big change. I mean, think of your favorite tank and then add another 10% alpha to it and... If that doesn't get you shaking in your socks, I don't know what will. Uh, <laughs> there's Black Friday sales that are coming up now. Uh, I haven't really had a look at it. Um, I've been playing a lot of Jaegeru. I played the M103 today and the Chieftain earlier this week. Uh, 
I really still love the M103. I'm going to do a review on that. I can't stop using the Jaeger-Roo. It is such an incredibly good tank. What about this drive there? Snaps out. Oh, it snaps out the shot on the drive wheel. It's just excellent work all around. Gun depression, alpha. It's got it in spades. Look after yourselves, boys and girls. Well driven, I'm a toaster. And until next time, cop a look at this big damage and stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.